talk about that now with Kellyanne Conway, Mr. Trump's new campaign manager. And uh, let's pick up where John just left off right there. You know, no tweets from Ryan's previous ahead of the GOP, no tweets from the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan or Mitch McConnell. Are you disappointed that GOP leaders are not stepping up to defend Mr. Trump here? Well, Ryan's previous was with Mr. Trump last night in Aspen together at a fundraiser, and they'll be in Las Vegas today. For Nothing public, though. Well, I think they're just really busy behind the scenes. We actually we had the RNC in yesterday, so we feel really good about the relationship between the presidential campaign and the Republican National Committee. Uh, but you know, George, this entire conversation had to be had. Republican presidential nominees usually aren't bold enough to go into communities of color and take the case right to them and compete for all ears and compete for all votes. They've been afraid to do that. So Mr. Trump deserves credit for at but least he's been taking doing the case it directly white to the people. Community. He's been talking about the black community, but doing it in white communities. Well, you hope they're listening. But I, I sat in a round table with him just yesterday where we had um, African-American leaders from uh, many different many different countries of origin and many different states. And it was a very productive conversation where they are telling him what concerns them within their communities, and he is listening. We heard Mr. Trump last night say that he thinks Hillary Clinton is a bigot. Do you think she's a bigot? I think her policies have uh, left many people behind. And if we're going to look at the 70 percent of Americans who say that this country is headed in the wrong direction and they want change, then we can't possibly abide policies by really a political party and, and Hillary Clinton but, leading but is it. But Mr. Trump that right to call behind. her a bigot? Well, is she right to call him a bigot? Have you seen what this man is called on a daily basis? He's called a bigot, a racist, a sexist. Why is this a one-way conversation? Why is her team and her apologists almost everywhere allowed to just hurl personal insults and get away with not having a press conference in 265 days, no press conference, no press outrage, George? And more to the point, why in the world is she giving speeches with two, two months to go about him and about a website and not about health care and the economy and education and ISIS. All the things Americans tell people in the ABC polls they care about. I think she brings up the website because it was run by the CEO of your campaign right now, Mr. Bannon. And we saw those uh, reports yesterday in both Politico and the New York Post saying that he had been charged with domestic violence back in 1996 and actually, according to the court records, told his wife not to appear uh, for, to, to file the charges. Was Mr. Trump aware of this? Is he okay with it? I, I don't know what he was aware of with, a, with respect to a 20-year-old claim where the charges were dropped. So that's all I know about it is what I read. Let's talk about immigration then because there has been a lot of questions about uh, Mr. Trump's policies the last couple of days. All through the primaries, he was very, very clear. All the undocumented immigrants in this country would have to leave the country. Is that still his position? Yes. I think you've heard him over the course of a week explain his position as being what it's always been, which is absolutely no amnesty. He's going to build the wall, which has been the centerpiece of his campaign from the beginning. He um, wants to protect the American worker, which is a way of talking about immigration that very few people do. Usually people talk about securing the border and they leave it at that. That's, that's really the floor and not the ceiling. He wants to make sure that American workers who are looking for jobs, who feel like they're competing with other folks, have that opportunity. He also has made very clear that those who have committed a crime will be returned immediately. And enforcing the law, unfortunately, in Washington, Georgia, is such a novel concept. The estimates are that if you enforce the law, so much of this takes care of itself. And as he said to a different anchor on a different network last night, we don't know how many are out there. But he said a couple of different things over the last couple of days. On, on Sean Hannity's show, he suggested that the undocumented could stay here legally. Then he talked on Anderson Cooper's show about leaving the country and then coming back. If they stay, Will there be a path to legalization, or must they leave the country? He has said no path to legalization, no path to citizenship, and no amnesty. He, you can return home, and then if you'd like to go stand in line, like everybody else is, the thing that we learn in kindergarten, stand in line, wait your turn, go through the normal courses, then that, that would be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. So how will you get them out of the country? That's to be determined in terms that you have to, he's got to talk to law enforcement agencies. This has never, this has never been tried uh, on such a scale. And in fact, it is President Obama who has deported, uh, by some estimates, two million plus people. So we know it's possible. It's just how do we, how are we dealing with the fact that, A, we do have illegal immigrants leaving, li living among us. And as he has said all week long, George, he wants to find a fair, humane way that doesn't cause people but harm. But just to be clear, final point, all the undocumented immigrants in this country will have to go. He has said that first you throw the bad ones out, the ones who have committed a crime. They leave. We don't know what that number is. Some people estimated about a million, but I don't think anybody clearly knows. Then you find a humane, fair way to deal with those who are still here. He said last night that you, they would have to return to their home countries, and then if they would like to come back the way they should have in the first place, they're welcome to do so. We're the most generous country to immigrants in the world, and that won't change under Donald Trump. Kellyanne Conway, thanks for coming Thank in this morning.